Hello and welcome back to how to paint a beach scene in oils. And I have done a little bit of work, made a few decisions since last we met. One of the things that I decided was um, because of the distance of the beach that we probably would not be able to see a lot of details of the places where the waves had already come and gone. And today I'm going to uh, put in the sand and then we'll go back and work on some of the details otherwise. And I'm beginning on this side of the painting so I could get closer to it. Now I'm going to be using two brushes today. One of them a larger uh, flat white bristle brush. In this case it's a number eight and then a smaller number four brush and I'm going to be doing some dry brushing so I did wet my brush but then I cleaned it out, squeezed all the, the turpentine out of it so that I could get the dry effect. I've already begun some of that and what we do with the dry brush is to scumble over the parts where we want to have some of the color shining through. So I'm going to continue just on this side of the painting for now. And I'm using just um, a solid white and um, I'm holding it upside down, so to speak, for And I'm just um, sort of barely touching this so that some of the paint will stay behind. But I'll still have some of my, in this case, wet sand showing up. And I'm going to continue on down. And as I get further away from the water, I'm going to be just a little heavier on the sand. I can always go back and add more. It's not quite as easy to take it off. We do have to keep in mind that the sea oats are going to be coming out of here. So everything that we do now is going to be pretty much um, final. And because we're going to have those smaller see up to the distance. We need to make sure that there's a sense of that distance on this side as well. Okay, I'm going to load my brush now with a little bit more white and lay down a little more. Now my son is going to be coming in from the left side of the painting and so as I get to these sea oaks or these, excuse me, sand dunes I'm going to want this area to be highlighted so I can go ahead and establish that part. Much of this is going to be in shadow, but I can establish that later. And 
I'm going to have a walkway through here or a path through here. You can hear my birds in the background. I have my door open and they're just singing up a storm. And speaking of storm, we're expecting some really bad weather this afternoon. I get this blocked in with my dry brush. I'm going to be coming back with a softer brush. Notice I've left um, some variation in my my wet sand, and I do have a little more detail to do on that. But I wanted to get my sand sand dry brushed. Because this is going to be a an overcast day, we can make the sand bright without making it um, sort of glaring. to my smaller brush. And this is just going to be a record for me. I'm going to get ready to put my sea oats in. <coughs>
And also because this is going to be an overcast day, I won't have, <coughs> excuse me, exaggerated um, highlights and shadows just on one side or the other. But once I get the foundation for my sea oats in, I can work some more on the highlights on the beach. Okay, I'm ready to start thinking about my sea oaks and um, I'm going to be mixing up some dark green using some sap green, probably some Payne's gray um, or you could just use the Payne's gray with um, different different shades of, uh, or tones of yellow. Okay, well, I'm going to call that finished for this session, and I'll be back. Thank you for joining me.